Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Today I will make a dinosaur skull. I try to measure so I have enough for both the skull part and the jaw part. I use some old newspapers to make a small ball of paper and I shape it to look a little bit like the skull that I'm going to make. This is going to be the upper part of the skull. And I just use my fingers and my hands to make it look a little bit like the skull. And try to fit it on the piece of paper that I had, the paper ball. The ball of paper will support the whole thing and uh, the upper part is a little bit heavy, so I try to make thin walls on it. I fit it on the paper and then I start shaping more and more with my hands to get an even skull and try to make it also, of course, symmetrical. It's important that this part of the work is done precisely, otherwise it will show. So make the base and uh, use a lot of time to get it right. And I of course have to say already in this stage that I don't know so much about dinosaur skulls. I'm not a paleontologist. so. Uh, this is going to be something like it. Maybe a T-Rex. The thing I do now is I start uh, digging out for uh, my eye globes and the nostrils. And of course, try to make them symmetrical. Always when you sculpt it's important that you look at your piece from all the different angles and sides so that you see that it actually is symmetrical. I scoop out the extra clay and now you can see the paper inside. If you make something really big it's also good to have a piece of plastic on top of the paper. This way the paper will not soak so much from the moist in the clay. Just by using my fingers and my hands, I try to figure out how to make this skull look natural. And just as a small tip, if you want to make a skull that looks perfect and natural, you can always, of course, print out on paper pictures of a skull that you want to make from all different angles. So far, I've just used one piece of clay. But now I will start attaching more and more to my skull. And always when I do that, I need to slip and score so that the piece actually sticks really well. The whole process of making the skull takes a few hours if you work all the time, but you might also need to use a hair dryer to uh, get the surface a little bit more dry every now and then. There's of course a lot of tools that you can use and I sometimes use these wooden tools but uh, on big sculptures I think that actually the fingers are the best. I now leave the upper part to dry for a while and uh, it's time to start making the jaw part. I measured the amount of clay in the beginning. So if I uh, make the walls the same thickness, 
it will be almost perfect with the upper part. When you do a skull like this, you need to fit it out many times and try it out. And uh, yes, sometimes you have to cut away and sometimes you have to put more clay to different spots and places. So I cut away some pieces and I adjust the jaw part. And remember, the better work you do on the base, the better result you have at the end. I now return to the upper part and do a little bit more on the nostrils and on the shape of the whole skull. I did not cover the jaw part so it can actually start drying out for a little bit. When you make skulls and uh, things like this, it's really fun to just let your imagination go wild because you can do whatever you want. And uh, well, anyway, this is not a perfect skull from a dinosaur. So if uh, you make something old, it doesn't matter. You can now see that the upper and uh, lower part starts actually fitting together. There's a lot to be done so um, every now and then I work on the lower part, I leave it to dry, work on the upper part and so on. And as I said sometimes I also use a hair dryer. Before I start playing a dentist, I need to draw around the upper part with a pencil. This way, I know exactly where it fits and where it doesn't fit. So, I cut away the paper and then I can use that as a stencil to uh, take a look how it looks on the jaw part. This way I can make really great adjustments. Now I return again to the upper part and uh, it needs to be a little bit more dry on the surface. I start refining the different shapes on the skull and uh, as you can see Right now I'm using a turntable. It's very good because then you can see it from all the different sides and angles. I cut away some more pieces on my skull. This way it looks more natural and it will not be that heavy. So the support, the base will actually hold. A little bit of water and just my fingers, as usual. As you probably noticed, some of these clips are speeded up, some of them even in 160%. So if you think that making a dinosaur will take you two hours, <laughs> you better think again. It's now time for me to flip the dinosaur over. I use polystyrene in two small plastic bags and then I have this chip wood board so I turn it all around. This way 
I know that it will not dent the skull, it will lay in a great position. I now remove all the paper. This way it can actually start drying a little bit better. I remove the extra clay from inside. If there is some flaws, I can of course, in this uh, time, I could put some more clay to it if I want to, and of course, remove extra clay. It's now time to make some teeth. This is a little bit time consuming, but uh, it will actually give a great look to your dino skull. Always remember to put some slip underneath and uh, you need to be really careful so that you don't break these teeth. It's good to have a wooden tool or a needle tool when you try to fit in between the teeth and make them actually stick well. I adjust the position of the teeth and after that it's time for the jaw part. Same thing, I cut out some pieces to make teeth and then I start attaching them too. Now after this, it's kind of critical when you try to fit the pieces together. Because the teeth will break really easily and it's really hard to see if you do this all by yourself. So I recommend that you have somebody else to help you when you try to fit them together the next time. Now it's time to look again what it looks like. And now you can see it actually starts looking like a real dinosaur. I figured out that I need a little bit of support at the back of my dinosaur skull. So I rolled out two coils and attached them to my skull. After that, it's time again to look how it fits together. After that, it's actually time to leave this dinosaur skull to just dry. And if you want to see the result, you need to wait for the next episode or part two of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again. Bye bye.